Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and jazakumullah khair for staying with us for uh, the continuation of the Ikna Dawa conference inshallah to move forward uh, if anyone has any questions you may post them in the comment section and I will read them out uh, for the speakers to ans answer inshallah I'd also like to ask everyone to please support us uh, support Ikna you can visit icna.org slash donate and help us in whatever way you can financially or if you'd like to support us uh, I guess in a physical sense by volunteering you can visit icna.org icna.org slash baraka uh, as you see it uh, coming on the bottom on the slide and there you can volunteer at you know whether it's YSM gain peace embrace to help the reverts and other things as well so inshallah I'll begin reading off the comments so please post them uh, in the comment section if you're on YouTube or Facebook. Okay, I believe this first question uh, would be for Dr. Jonathan. How do we tell the difference between a trial and a punishment? Okay, I'll mute myself. So, um, the correct answer is you don't tell the difference because it doesn't matter right so let's say let's say it's a trial okay let, let's say you know i um i lose my phone right um it gets a bunch of water gets poured on it, it's destroyed okay uh how do i react if it's a trial i'm supposed to say alhamdulillah you know uh, that God gave me this blessing and I'm going to be grateful to God and I'm going to work and uh, see if I should get another one and if I get another one I'm going to use it for good purposes and good, do good deeds and be grateful to God Okay, and if it's a punishment I still have to say Alhamdulillah that uh, you know you know, maybe I've some of my sins in the afterlife are going to be reduced by this loss I suffered now so it doesn't matter. Either way, your job is to, to be grateful to God and to keep perspective and to do good deeds, to believe and do good deeds. I would, I would say, sorry, I would say it's dangerous to get into that. Sometimes people think it's a punishment. You start saying, oh, this thing happened to that guy because he's bad. We shouldn't be, we shouldn't try and figure it out. Only God knows the answer. I have a question for Sister Nahila. Um, oftentimes when non-Muslims accept Islam, they don't have uh, the motivation to start practicing Islam. What are your, uh, or what do you give as advice, I guess? Uh, Bismillah. Um, so there's a lot of changes when we embrace Islam. And I think um, one of the most important things is to uh, really remember uh, why you embrace Islam, what is it that initially touched your heart, and obviously it takes us to believing in the Creator and seeking for His pleasure. And so understanding um, the five pillars of Islam is important as, as, as well as the six articles of faith. The second pillar of Islam is Salat, and I always tell, uh, you know, my revert sisters and my community, Salat, the prayer, is your oxygen and your connection to your creator. So don't ever, no matter how difficult life can get, uh, don't ever leave your Salat. If you hold on to that, everything will fall into place. Um, I was talking to a sister uh, last week, subhanAllah, that took Shahada about seven years ago with me. And she was telling me how difficult life has been in these seven years. And she says, you know, the difference between me and the community I come from in New Jersey is that I've never left my Salat. And I think that's why I'm still Muslim today. Because we have seen a lot of sisters leaving Islam or coming back or take it, removing the hijab or what have you. And so when she said that to me, she's like, I remember when you told me that. Hold on to your Salat with your teeth, with your might. And so establishing your prayer is important. And something that she, she commented was, you know, sometimes I didn't feel my Salat. But I still did the movements. I still did the ritual. I still had a connection. And so that has kept me. And I, you know, I always ask Allah, make dua to, to put it in my heart again and so, so on and so forth. So it's difficult, uh, but don't let go of your salat. 
Jazakallah khair. And I have a question for Imam Giasi. Um, what do you think about Muslims using Malcolm X, uh, I guess, to do dawah to the African-American community? Uh, what do you think about using him as kind of like a bridge to connect the African-American community uh, to Islam? Overall, um, I, I think it's a good idea. I mean, you should use any tool that you can. And if they have a lot of um, respect for him, then no doubt um, utilizing his life to make a point and to bring them close to Islam would be good. If LeBron James was a Muslim, then I would say by all means, you, you utilize him to call people to Islam. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Muhammad Ali, people that people respect. Sadly, though, uh, the narrative of, of Malcolm X seems to be dying, uh, to be very honest with you. When I was growing up in Memphis uh, and accepted Islam uh, around 1990, Malcolm X was um, well respected and this story known and um, it, it meant something. I don't think it means as much today as it did back then. So maybe it's even a better idea for people to revive uh, his story. And maybe more importantly, or just as important, we need new Malcolm X's. Um, we are talking about, you know, these great figures of the past and we need these figures in the future. And when I was growing up, just one other uh, point is that Islam had a very positive um, image, at least in the African-American community. Uh, I, I, when I was growing up, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was still playing, and he was the uh, the GOAT. <laughs> it wasn't d d debatable. He was the best player. And still, I think it's debatable uh, because I, I, I watched him play in the stats. But anyway, uh, Muhammad Ali also at that time was known to be one of the greatest uh, athletes and boxers and Malcolm X was known to be one of the greatest speakers but um, so we need to remind people of that wonderful history but at, at the same time we need new leaders and my point was that Muslims have always been uh, front and center when it comes to injustice and you see that again even athletes uh, as well as those who were involved in as uh, H. Rap Brown, uh, Jamil Alameen and others who were involved in civil rights movement they if they weren't already Muslim they became Muslim they were attracted to Islam and so uh, when we really show that we sincerely care about the people we will have um, um, and we will produce more um, of these legendary figures in a lot of respects. Okay, inshallah, I think this is a good question for all three speakers. Uh, so I'd ask all three to kind of keep it a bit brief. We only have uh, a bit over five minutes left. But how, it's a two-part question. How would you give sympathy to someone whose relative died as a non-Muslim uh, after, you know, they've accepted Islam? Uh, and I would add on to it, how would we also aid a non-Muslim, or I'm sorry, a Muslim, a new Muslim who accepts Islam and his non-Muslim family is turning against him? So um, if Dr. Jonathan wants to go first, followed by Sister Nahila and Imam Giasi. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I would just say, you know, that look, God, God does not wrong any of His servants. It's a very important principle in the Quran. In this Allah, but the Lamb and the Labid, God doesn't wrong any of His servants. So, you know, whatever you just have to trust that um, that uh, God will have mercy and be just, and that uh, people's ultimate fate is is, is 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 taken care of. You know, I mean, that's all you can do. Um, in terms of what would they, do, what you do if someone writes you, someone if their family is uh, not responding? Just, I mean, I think the important thing is just to always be good to your family, even if they're being bad to you. Uh, always, you know, if you turn against them, if you react badly, they're just going to use that as more evidence that, that you've taken a bad turn. You know, but if you are still do, you know, birr al walidain and itayl al qurba, they'll. I think there's a strong chance they might eventually uh, come around to. Uh, to if you're doing you positive and you're doing Islam positive. 
Sister Nahila. Um, I'm going to echo uh, Dr. Brown, and um, I would say, you know, Rahma, mercy, he mentioned, and I would even add compassion. Our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, he was very compassionate. And um, respect is key in every aspect. Um, my grandmother passed away. It's going on two years in a couple of days. And I remember flying to Mexico and uh, it was very difficult. It was very difficult being surrounded by crosses and saints. And, you know, here we are, my son and I trying to pray, play Quran to her, even though she wasn't mentally there anymore. But I was very respectful to my family. And, and I think that's really key to anything. Um, after all, they're still your family. Uh, and just remember that uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was very compassionate very merciful and again respect is key in every relationship no matter muslim non-muslim um your relatives your friends uh you know treat others the way you want to be treated and i i guess i would kind of tabletop that it's very important for us to you know at least simply be there for the individual like sister nahila mentioned in her talk a lot of reverts don't even have somebody to go to so just being there for a person uh you know it would i'm sure would mean a lot for the person to have somebody you know they say a shoulder to lean on uh imam Gyasi is reconnecting in just one second and he can give his answer uh sound like i'm sorry about, about that i don't know what happened um uh, first it reminds me of the verse in the quran in which Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala said, it billati hiya ahsan, that you return uh, this evil with good. And if you do so, you will find that your enemy will be your closest uh, of friends, but only a few can truly do this. So if they're your parents, um, no, I would advise them to be good. And we, just yesterday I saw on Facebook, someone shared a story of someone cutting in front of them, and then the person realizes he didn't have his wallet, and the person pays for um, the food of that person who did a bad deed, and yet, you know, um, he's thankful, and the relationship uh, changes. But that's hard to do, and not all the time that's the best thing to do. But my point is that that's one thing that we should do, and this is the what a believer. Uh, uh, is and being Muslims all about. We see this uh, replete. <laughs> I mean, we see this uh, stories like this throughout the the seat of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And as for uh, comforting the person who's lost a loved one, um, I think it's different from person to person. And and even Muslims, you have to. Some people want their space. Some people n need. Um, encouraging words. Some people just need you to visit. Some people just, I mean, it just it really depends. And I think the question is, should, you know, uh, are you going to make dua? Are you going to pray for them? Some people are not looking for that. Uh, they're just looking for, uh, especially in today's world where things are so generic, they're just looking uh, for um, uh some comfort and a, a shoulder. So I would support that person. And like Dr. J uh, Brown said, we don't know. We don't say who's going to hell and who's going to heaven. <laughs> so that's up to a lot. But uh, we could say, you know, this person lived a, a beautiful life. We can recognize that and, and we're thankful. So there's a lot of things that you can do, but it's not just complex and difficult for that situation. It's for every situation. Wallahi, I know people, I myself and someone who served as an imam as a chaplain sometimes I feel awkward or uncomfortable around someone because you know they don't want you to uh, I may, maybe I don't know how to respond because everyone is different you know uh, so I think that's the number one thing is to know really what that person is looking for and then to try to provide that uh, without um, speaking or doing something that's inappropriate and uh, Allah knows best. Jazakallah khair. Inshallah, the last question I'm going to give to uh, Sister Nahila. Uh, there's somebody in the comments um, that a few times they put uh, that they've been Muslim for several years and don't know many Muslims. Is there anything you can tell them maybe on Embrace website or something that they can reach out to? 
So alhamdulillah, this pandemic has brought a lot of goodness, um, a lot of reflection, and Embrace has gone online 100% because we're not meeting. So we have something for you every single day, um, and we have a whole online community. Uh, so reach out to us. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and our website is embracereverts.org. So www embracereverts.org we're here ready to embrace every single one of you so reach out to us inshallah jazakallah khair and inshallah with that we will conclude uh once again you can support us financially by donating at ikna.org slash donate or help uh volunteer at embrace rice and gain peace and other chapters uh by visiting ikna.org slash barakah jazakallah khair